As we work through our study of area, we're going to look at the areas of regular polygons. Since regular polygons do have special characteristics that set them apart, they also have special ways of calculating area that don't affect the others. First, we need to look at the parts of a regular polygon. We'll start with the center. Any polygon, any regular polygon can be circumscribed by a circle, meaning have a circle drawn on the outside that just touches each of the vertices. In the middle of the polygon is the center of the circle. Now as we start working out from that center to any of the locations where the vertex touches the edge of the circle we have a radius. Now the plural for radius is radii, but and we might be talking about that here, but that radius starts to play an important part in our formulations. And then last, from the center out to perpendicular out to one of the edges of the polygon is this other line called the apothem. That's located here. And a lot of the formulas that we're going to be using focus on this apothem. Now our relationships and understanding of regular polygons and special triangles that come into effect with them will play a part in finding these radii and the apothem. So let's start taking a look at what we have. Let's begin with a postulate. Postulate 10-1 states, quite simply, if two figures are congruent, then their areas are equal. And the reason this has effect is when we're looking at a regular polygon, if we can find the area of one of the wedges created by the radii to the center, then all we have to do is find how many such segments there are and multiply accordingly. Next, the area of a regular polygon, theorem 10.6, tells us the area of a regular polygon is half the product of the apothem and the perimeter. And the reason that this works, using a quick sketch, is if I have a regular polygon, let's take a square, if I can find that distance from the center out to one edge, the apothem, what I have is a right triangle. The area for a triangle is one half base times height. So if I do this for each of the right triangles contained in here, all those bases added together would become the perimeter. So we have one half area equals one half apothem perimeter. One half apothem is one half height. The perimeter is the sum of all the bases. So let's take a look at how we can use this to help us uh, find some area. First we need to be able to find the sizes of different angles. So in the regular pentagon here, three angles are number, are shown and numbered, one, two, and three, and we need to find the angle measurements of each. Well for angle one is equal to what portion of the wedge or what portion of the center circle it takes up. In the middle we have this circle and it's divided equally amongst the number of segments. So a total circle is 360 degrees. We divide that by the five segments made by, made by the polygon, in this case the pentagon, and dividing that we come out with 72 degrees. Now the measure of angle 2 is if you drop that apothem, which acts as an angle bisector. So it's going to be the measure of angle 1 divided by 2. So that's 72 degrees divided by 2, or 36 degrees. Now the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 2 plus 90 degrees has to equal 180 degrees. So subtracting the 90 degrees using my subtraction property of equality, and then some substitution, 
the measure of angle 3 plus 36 degrees has to equal 90 degrees. Subtraction property of equality again, the measure of angle 3 is going to be that 90 degrees minus 36 degrees, which is 54 degrees. So, with very little information, just knowing that we have a regular polygon, we can find quite a bit as far as information of angle measurements is concerned. Now, let's apply that formula for the area of a regular polygon. Here we have a regular polygon, so our area will be one half the apothem times the perimeter. Now let's find out how many sides we have. I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. This is a decagon. So we have one half times the apothem, which is 12.3 inches, times the perimeter, which is 8 inches times 10. So we end up with one half of 12 and 3 tenths times 80. Doing a little bit of uh, commutative property, half of 80 is 40 times 12.3, and we come up with an area on this figure in square inches of 492. So, to find that perimeter, find the length of one side and multiply it by the number of sides, and it's just one half apothem perimeter after that. Now, we can also use the information we know about special right triangles, such as our 30, 60, 90, and 45, 45, 90, to occasionally find missing side lengths. So let's take a look real quick at that. Here I have a regular triangle, also known as an equilateral. And all I'm given is that the length of one side is 8. I need to find the area. Well, from what we remember of right triangles, if we drop an altitude, we end up with a 30, 60, 90 triangle where this side length is 4 and then the remaining one will be 4 times the square root of 3 inches. So now we can apply our formula area equals 1 half the apothem times the perimeter so that's 1 half of 4 square root 3 times the perimeter, which is 8 times 3. So I get 1 half, 4 root 3, times 24. Again, commutative property, I can multiply the half and the 24. It gives me 12 times 4 root 3. Multiplying that, I come out with 48 square root of 3. That is my exact answer. If I wanted to find something more decimal approximate, I could say that this is approximately equal to 83 and one-tenth square inches. So combining different ideas that we have and finding area of regular polygons will be very helpful, uh, especially doing geometric constructions or applications in real life, especially in the construction building trades. Make sure you have these concepts down and are ready to use them.